Hi everybody, it's Sarah Curry with Let's Make Art and I teach watercolor and today we are doing tropical trees. Oh. We have Keenan here who's working the cameras. Hello. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the invite. And we will be doing this project in four steps. Our very first step is we will be putting in our wash on our sky. Now it's possible you might have to do this in two layers. It just depends while we're painting, so we'll figure it out as we go. Our second step is we will be putting in our clouds here. Our third step is we'll be putting in our trees. And our fourth step is more trees. More trees? I don't know why I decided to split it up into two steps. It just felt right. It does feel right. Okay, great. Plus four is an even number. It is. That's all I have. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. Okay, so the colors that we will be using, our very first color is pink. Our second color is lemon yellow. Our third color is magenta. And our last color is azure blue. Now these are from our dandelion, our house, house paint, uh, which is dandelion paint co. I'm just gonna like darken some of these cause I just went too light. It was so soft. Yeah, just so, there we go. So that's our uh, in-house paint brand. We'll be using three paintbrushes today. We're gonna be using a round two and a round six wow. and also a wash one, okay? Now, if you don't have a wash one, you can still do this project with a round six. It's just gonna take you longer to do the wash area on your project. And also, I just want to acknowledge that like, I'm trying to figure out how I can show you guys how to use more supplies um, and like, give you more knowledge without overwhelming you with options. Mm. And so like a round two and a round six is like our standard go-to brushes. That's what we use most of our projects. But I wanna show you that like there are other brushes <laughs> and there are benefits to other brushes. So I'm trying to figure out how to introduce that without being like, here's a ton of stuff. You know what I mean? So like, that's why I do things here and there. If you have a wash brush, it doesn't even have to be a one inch. I highly recommend you use it for this project. If you don't, and you just have these two brushes, still possible, it'll just take you longer, okay? Okay, thank you. You are so welcome. And the paper we're using actually is our Let's Make Art watercolor paper. It's a cold press, 140 pound uh, paper. And you're gonna wanna paint on the rougher side, the one with a little bit more texture, okay? I'm also using my favorite tape. The magic tape. The soft tape, Holbein soft tape, I think is what it's called. Okay, did I say all the supplies? I'm also using a butcher tray palette. I'm also using a glass for water. You said a lot of things. I've said so many things, but I just- All of them are very helpful. I just wanna give you all the information you need. Okay, we're good, right? We're good, I've got a Twix on standby. Perfect, okay, we're gonna do our oath. Okay. And then we'll get into painting. And right now, Kenan's thinking, where is that dang bell? I have no idea. Okay, you're gonna have to make the dink sound then. Okay. Okay, we're doing this. <coughs> and then, but next time we gotta find our bell. Okay. Because Michelle sent that to us. I've just rearranged important. a lot. And Figure it out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you can raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna go into step one and we're gonna do our wash first on our sky. Now the reason why I like this paper is because it blends a little bit easier with the colors. So with Canson, Canson is a huge paper that we use and have used. The blooms, it blooms pretty easy, um, which can be really frustrating, especially if you're trying to do skies or landscapes. And so um, I was really excited to do this project because I know this paper handles those color transitions fairly well. So mm. yeah, let's get started. So our whole goal here for our color transitions is we wanna start with like the yellow and then mix that a little bit with the pink to get kind of like a peach. And then we're gonna go with pink and then magenta and then mix some of the blue with the magenta to get that like purple at the top here. Wow, are we starting from the bottom to the top? Yes. Fun. Yes. 
That is a new brush. This is a new brush. I also don't know if you're supposed to press down to get the brush to soften up. I don't know if that's a real thing or if I'm ruining my brushes, so don't look at that part of what I'm doing. They didn't even see it. Okay, perfect. They might not know what you're talking <laughs> They're about. They're like, I don't even know what you're saying right now. Okay, so I, I got my brush wet. I hit it off the side of the cup so it's not dripping. I'm grabbing some yellow and I'm gonna start off the bottom and I taped my uh, paper so I can have a clean edge. And I'm just gonna start putting in this yellow here. Now I'm, I wanna work fairly quickly, okay? That's so I'm putting in yellow, yellow. And then right away, I'm gonna add water. Oh. And start spreading that yellow out, okay? And then after about, I'm a third up on my paper, I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow and mix it with a little bit of pink. And it's gonna warm up. It's gonna turn this really pretty peach color. Oh. I'm gonna put that peach in there. And again, I'm using my wash brush. I'm just working it back and forth and I'm working quickly. That looks so good. Okay, and then now I'm gonna grab a little bit more of my pink and right where my peach left off, I'm gonna start adding that pink. Working it back and forth. Mm. Adding more and more. Now this is a really, so you know how in the beginning I was just like, we might have to do two layers. Already I'm like, I'm gonna have to do a second layer because look how light this value mm -hmm. is compared to that. And that's okay, just keep going. So doing my pink and now I'm gonna take some of my pink and I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of magenta and introduce that to the party. Hi, I'm magenta and I like to party. <laughs> and I'm gonna mix with pink. And I'm gonna mix with pink. And then later, I'm gonna mix with Azure. <laughs> <laughs> you gummy on the rocks. <laughs> what? I don't know. That's the only thing that came to my mind. It was perfect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna do just straight magenta. My friends call me magenta, but you can call me on the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now I'm gonna take a little bit of Azure, mix it with my magenta to get like this really pretty. Ooh. I'm excited about this color. Yep. It's a good color. Wow. And then maybe if you're just feeling like really, you know, mm -hmm. edgy, Ooh. you can take a little bit more blue to get a darker purple and just kind of, just a hint. Oh, wow. Just a hint. Oh, that's okay. lovely. So this looks really good. The top part is kind of the dark, the saturation that I'm looking for. This bottom part, I was just a little too, a little too soft. A little too. I can't go that high. <laughs> so I'm gonna do another layer, just right on top of it. And basically repeat what I just did. Repeat and repeat. But I'm gonna get more pink colors here. Now, the other thing I wanna point out before we do another layer is I have two jars of water, which is rare for me, but. Well, it's a success, the success is rare. Yes. Because you've been doing really good with the two jars of water. If I dirty both of them. That. What? Oh yes, yeah. yes. So what I wanna point out to you is as we do this yellow part, don't use this dirty water because it will make it turn green Ooh. because it's, it has a blue hint and that's such a light value. So, use your second thing of water, your clean water here, or go rinse your water before we jump in towards doing the second layer. Now, I'm gonna be a little bit more aggressive, okay? I think my very first step, I was feeling a little timid. Mm. And now I'm gonna be like, I'm okay with color. I want this to be very bright. So I'm gonna really just go for it. So I have, I got my brush wet, hit it off the side so it's not dripping, grabbed way more yellow than I did the first time, and let's go for it. Oh, wow. Starting with yellow, grab water and blend. And at this point, you're gonna see your, pa your paper start to wave and distort normal, okay? Totally normal. Grabbing more yellow and more of the pink to get that really gorgeous peach. Yeah, that's nice. And now I'm gonna really go for it with the peach. Peach and pink. Oh yeah, there we go. Look oh, look at that, that gorgeous color. 
and just kind of work it back and forth into that yellow. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab a little bit more of the magenta. And let's do, my magenta got all purpley with my azure, so I'm gonna put a little bit more on my palette. I just want a stronger pink color mm. in here. And again, I wanna call out like, you guys are the artists here. So if you're like, you know what? I actually, I really like, I wanna focus on these colors instead, go for it. Like you don't have to do everything that I'm doing. I wanna make sure you guys know that you have the permission to do whatever you want. Cause your opinion, just as valid as mine. Except Keenan's. <laughs> <laughs> I found that brush for you. You did. I was like, Keenan, I need a one inch brush. He's like, found it. Boom. Couldn't find the bell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I'm doing another layer of pink over my yellow a little bit because I want that bright yellow, but I don't want it to overtake the painting. Um, so I'm softening the rest of the yellow with more of a peach. Now we're gonna do another, Keep just keep going. Now I'm going into the purple. Don't forget to wet your brush so it goes on smooth. Now more blue to get more of that purple. I do like those textured looks though, from a drier brush. Yeah. Yeah, dry brush textures are so nice. Okay, mm. that feels pretty good. Now, comparing my reference photo, my yellow does seem a little bit more saturated. I'm kind of okay with that. That doesn't bother me. I do feel like I want a little, I don't know, I kind of want to blend this out a little bit better. I'm just gonna work this back and forth a little bit more. Make that a little less of a harsh line then? Yeah. Okay, now, while the painting is still wet like this, we're gonna work quickly and move into step two. I'm gonna grab my round six, and this is where I'm gonna put in my clouds. And I'm just gonna put in my clouds by doing water drops. So starting from the top, I'm taking my round six and using just water. Oh my gosh, what was that? Sounds like something was thrown, maybe onto the roof or against the building. Nicole's probably really upset. She, like, she threw, probably threw that chair or something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Nicole seems all sweet and happy, but. You have no idea <laughs> behind just... the camera. <laughs> Okay, so I'm putting in water drops here and you can see that that color is already moving. So I kind of want to do like um, drops that kind of go across the middle and then get a little bit smaller as they go down. Okay, maybe put some out here. Now the nice thing about clouds, and I want to remind you guys, somewhere there is a cloud that looks like what we are doing. And have you guys even seen some pictures of clouds? Like there's there's a, a couple that came in and visit us and they showed us a picture of a, what is it called, a mothership cloud? Well, I think they called it the mothership cloud, but it was a, of a storm that was coming into uh, up in Iowa. And yes, it looked like- It was insane. A UFO mothership. It was massive across the entire sky and it was a perfect, layered circle yeah so it was incredible don't stress about clouds okay so i put my water in and now i'm going to use my paper towel oh and lift oh that's fun so i'm just kind of lifting up more of that color it's i want it to feel uneven as in like some of the parts are gonna feel more white than others. I want that because that's how clouds are. If you look at clouds, like some parts are like 
white and then some are like go to a darker valued gray and there's like different layers and stuff like that. So you can even go off script of like go off from where you didn't even like put down the water. Gosh, I actually really love how I got some dark edges right there. I do too. So I'm going to leave those because I think those are cool. But I do feel like I need some that come out this way. While I was driving into work today, this is a great example. There was a super low series of clouds that as I drove under them, I looked past them and the sky above, it was like reverse blur, like the clouds in front of me were out of focus because up above, higher in the sky, perfect clouds and sun. Really? It was so trippy. Like I was driving into fog that I hadn't hit yet. Weird. It was so cool. And then one other thing that I wanna say is right now, you're probably looking at your painting and thinking, I'm sorry, what? And I want to say that when we put the trees in, that is what is gonna bring this all together, okay? Because I remember when I actually made this project, I was doing my clouds and I almost trashed this at this point because I was just like, these clouds just look a little bit too funky, like blah, blah, blah. And then I thought, no, Sarah, give this painting a chance. You're not done with it. Let's see what happens when you put the trees in. And so like, don't stress too much about your clouds at this point give your painting to be a chance to be something before you decide that it's not working. And I'm not saying that like, you won't decide that. Like every time you paint something, there's a chance that it's just not gonna come out how you want it to, and that's okay. Um, but give your painting a chance to be something before you just decide, no. Okay, and now what we do is we have to wait for this to dry, which is gonna take some time. But I figured we can do a lesson on painting palm trees Oh, yes, please. While we're waiting for that to dry. So let's talk about palm trees. So I got my reference photo here. I got a scratch paper. I'm going to use my round two. And I got my palette. And I'm going to use my round six. So when you're doing palm trees, the a couple of things that I want you guys to pay attention to that I did in this painting is I changed up the size because I wanted the perspectives to ship. I wanted there to feel like a sense of depth. So if you were to do palm trees that were all the same size next to each other, that's not a problem. It would just kind of flatten your depth of field of what you're seeing. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. Where because we switched up the different sizes and stuff, it's like clear that these palm trees are farther away. It, this kind of feels like I might be almost up in the air looking out or like it kind of changes this pers perspective because of the angles that I put the trees. So um, if you like for you, if you're like this one is just way too long, that's fine. You can lower it or this one if you want it to be bigger or if you want it to seem like you're on the ground with them, then like the ones that are closest to you, you would actually really only see the trunk. Does that make sense? Cause it's like right here and you're cutting it off. But anyways, okay. So. We're gonna mix a really dark value that's gonna act as our black because we don't actually have black. So I'm gonna take blue, I'm gonna take magenta, and I'm gonna take yellow and mix those all together. Now this black is actually gonna look like a really dark purple. Now if you're adding the yellow and you have too much yellow and blue, then it's gonna turn green. If yours is turning green, do another swoop of magenta. The magenta will counteract the green and turn it more gray. So when you paint those, mm -hmm. for the side angle, would you be able to do closer to where your swatches are? Or you could flip the paper so you don't see as much swatch so we can get a good side angle. Like this? Yeah, nice. Okay, so when you're doing your trees, I like to start with my trunk, okay? And the thing about trunks is like, if you look at palm trees, sometimes they curve, okay? Sometimes 
there's thicker and thinner areas. So it doesn't have to be perfect, even parallel lines that you fill in, okay? Hmm. Like, don't focus on that. Try and do it in one brush stroke because I feel like that will lend itself to more like the natural shape of the trunk. And I kept mine for the most part straight, but you can see like that one's a little bit curved, that one's uneven, that one's uneven. So kind of just play with different trunks. And I do try and have them narrow in at the top. For the most part, they're not as extreme in terms of like, like an oak tree trunk, mm. you know what I mean? Um, they're pretty even, but I feel like they do are a little bit thicker on the bottom and narrow in at the top, just not as extreme. And then once you have your trunk, I like to put in like the palms, okay? So I'm gonna have a palm going out this, this way, this way, this way, this way, okay? And I just want you to practice. So like, this isn't, how do I say this? You need to be able to do thin lines. So practice your thin lines for this project. To do thin lines, you're gonna to wanna to do a vertical hold and light pressure, okay? Swift movements. Vertical hold, light pressure. And it's okay if you get a funky, wonky one in there, okay? That's, that happens. That is true in nature too. And then you're gonna do your little fronds. Hans. That's it. <laughs> Off of the main stem. And kind of just have it follow. your middle stem. Now, the other thing is like your lines are gonna overlap with one another. That's okay. That is true to what we would see for a silhouette for a palm tree. And your brain is gonna tell you, don't do that, but do it. So you're not the boss of me, brain. Brain, you can keep coming in here, telling me how to live my life. That is a wonderful little palm tree. Okay. So you're just gonna repeat that. And like, you can play with too, like the angles of your fronds. I really hope I'm saying that right. I really don't know if I am. <laughs> but like, for example, um, one, two, three, four, five. Actually, I haven't, I feel like there's more, I feel like it changes like how many actual arms there are. I don't think there's only a set number, but I could be making that up. I'm Googling some palm tree information for us. Perfect. But you can have some that come like straight down. Like you can see on this one right here, that went like straight down over the trunk. And then this one I feel like is more like all up instead of down. And I've, I saw examples of both. And so like, Allow yourself to change um, the angles, the amount, um, like let your trees have character. Let each of them be slightly different from each other. They don't have to be carbon copies, okay? And the other thing that I wanna pay, want you to pay attention to is the ones that are the farthest away from us are gonna be the thinnest, okay? So like this one right here, my trunk is really thin and like the fronds themselves are really skinny. Like some of them, you can't even see the connecting lines because that's how far away they are. Where the palm trees that are closest to us are gonna be thicker, okay? So the thinness of these right here should not be the same thinness as your big one up front. Like your palm tree up front needs to have thicker fronds, okay? Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Do you see what I'm saying? And fronds is spelled F-R-O-N-D-S. I thought you were saying frond like F-R-A-W-N. Is so that I'm a word? Really, no, probably not. I'm just really <laughs> glad I looked it up. Me too. Okay, and then I want you to practice. So we practiced our palm tree with the round two. I want you to practice it with the round six because I did the larger ones with my round six. 
and really just mix all your colors together to get just like such a dark value. So like here's my trunk. Okay. I have a really cool information about palm trees. Okay. There are over 2,500 species. Not all palm trees are trees. Some are shrubberies. Weird. Yeah. They have two types of leaves. I can barely pronounce these. Palmate and pinnate, I believe. Okay. They grow coconuts, acai fruit, mm. betel nuts, and dates. I had no idea. Me neither. And one species can grow up to 200 feet tall. Whoa. Yeah. Okay, and one quick note on these larger ones. And now I did do another tutorial. I believe it's called Tropical Sunset. I don't know. It's a sunset with palm trees in it. And in there I go over how to do larger palm trees. Mm -hmm. um, so if you watch that, it's a similar lesson. But basically what you guys need to know is what I'm doing. So, okay, is this on a good close-up? Yes, it is. Okay, here's my trunk. Here's my, sorry, let me adjust that. Here's my stem of the palm, of the frond or whatever, okay? And then like when you think of the individual pieces off of a frond, they're, they start narrow and then they get thicker and then they get narrow again. Now what happens is those thicker areas actually like kind of accumulate together and gravity is pulling them in a similar direction okay so what I do to make it easier for me that I think adds like some more realistic thing is instead of taking a round two and doing each individual one okay mm -hmm. what I'll do is if this is my stem I'll take my round six and I'll actually paint like a chunk here like this and then I'll take my round two and do the connecting lines oh like that like I just feel like that shape is a little bit more true to the silhouette than this a hundred percent it is so that's just a little trick I don't think doing it individually is bad or wrong but like especially on these larger ones here, that's essentially what I did and you can see it there. I did thicker chunks of brush stroke here and then I thinned it out at the top and the bottom. <laughs> Same thing over here. Sarah, that's so cool. Thanks. I just feel like it adds a little bit more realism. Um, so you guys take a minute, play while your painting is drying and it's, it's good to like just I want you to approach this as if it's like not a big deal. You know what I mean? Like you're just a tree and a piece of paper. You're not that scary, you know, like, because I feel like that's how you can loosen up and having kind of loose, relaxed brush strokes is good for this painting, for these trees. Especially if you're practicing while your painting dries. Yeah. But I mean, I absolutely have a fear. <laughs> like when I go to my painting, like, that's a real thing because you're like, okay, now I'm going to do it on the actual thing. And you're like, am I ready? And you're <laughs> like, well, only one way to find out. Yeah, because I think, I think even after, so I put in the sky and then I was just like, oh, I don't know. I don't know about these clouds. And then I'm like, well, let me put in the trees. And then I put in the first tree and I was just like, oh, no, I'm going to have to start all over again. But it actually turned out just fine. Yeah, I think it was a great project. Okay. So my clouds are drying. I think I'm getting some really cool textures, especially on this one. Yes. Like, I feel like this bloomed a little bit easier than my example, but I'm not mad about it. I actually think it adds some interest right there at the top where these bottom ones are more like the soft transitions, like what I have here on my example. Yeah. So I'm gonna keep it. That's not a problem. Okay. It's great. Kind of seems stormy. Yeah. Those dark ones up top. I love yeah. that. Like maybe it's about to rain. Yes. And I'm just going to add just more paint. I mean, if there's anything you guys have plenty of, I'm sure it's paint. So just like go crazy. 
and mix as much as you can to get like such a dark value. Let's see what color I got. Oh, look at that. Look at that almost black color. It's good. Wow, you said go crazy with the paint. You meant it. I, when I say something, I mean it. Except when I don't. <laughs> Except when I don't. <laughs> okay, so. I feel like it's dry. Let's test it. Let's just try it. You'll know when it's not dry if your dark color starts to bleed a lot. I actually love how you said, I feel like it's dry as you were feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I'm gonna start with the two. I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna start with this tree right here, this big guy right here. And if I was super confident my painting would dry, I would just go right with a round six, but I'm gonna try with the round two first because if it's not dry, it's gonna bleed, but it won't bleed a ton because it's a round two, not a round six. Smart. So I'm just gonna test it with my two. Then you wanna give it a second. Maybe three. Okay, it's bleeding a little bit, but not a ton actually. So I'm gonna just keep going because I, I don't feel like that's bled a lot. So, okay, now I'm gonna switch to my six. And thicken up. Man, that already looks so cool. Why are silhouettes so satisfying? Silhouettes are so great. Okay, now let's see how we are over the clouds. I'm gonna put in my branch, going that way. All right, again, I am seeing a tiny bit of bleeding, um, not enough to stop me, but if you guys wanna wait till your paper is drier, go for it. So we wait about five to 10 minutes in that time frame. Yeah. That's not bad. That's not bad, and if you have a heat gun, mm -hmm. um, that would make it go much faster. And, um, okay, now I'm gonna grab my six and I'm gonna do my chunk part. This part is my favorite part. Cause it's like, who would have thought? Who would have thunk? And then I'm gonna take my two and you can even just pull the color off of it. Like you don't even have to pick up more color. That's such a good idea. And then connect it to the stem. Okay. And then you would see a hint of the other side, but you have to think about gravity and how light these leaves are, where if it's going down and one side is falling down, the other side is not gonna be falling up. Like that's not how it works, right? The other side of that two sides of the leaves is also falling down. We just don't really see it because the front side is covering it. So you're just gonna want to like hint that there is another side. Pro tip. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm gonna do my next little section, kind of coming out that way. Do my chunks. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more white space in this one. This one I didn't give myself as much white space. So that one, this one I'm gonna make sure I do. And this is the other beautiful thing about doing a lot of something is you can learn as you go. Like just because that one doesn't have a bunch of white space, that doesn't mean this entire painting is ruined. It's just like, okay, next one, I'm gonna leave a little bit more white space and we're gonna keep on going. And at the end of the day, because there are so many, like odds are someone is not gonna like pull that one frond out of the bunch and be like, you didn't leave a lot of white space on that. You know, like <laughs> nobody does that. And if they do, just kidding, <laughs> they're fine, they're great. Okay, and then we kind of got the other side a little bit. I love that they're called fronds. Me too. That's such a random word. It's a great word, right? 
I started playing Words with Friends recently, nice. and I'm a- addicted. And right when right when I said the word frond, I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta save that. Gotta that's a use good. That. <laughs> that's a good word. Okay. Now I will say that the palm or the fronds that kind of come more straight up, I that was really tricky for me because I know that they're going like up but gravity is also making them curve down and the individual leaves curve down. So like part of me when I was painting it, like I really had to fight my mind about it. And part of me just kind of decided to like, okay, I'm just gonna go for it. Like, I'm not gonna overthink this. If it's helpful for you to look at a lot of reference photos before you paint, go for it. Um, But I kind of decided just to like let go. And some of them I do have going like angled up a little bit um, because that's what I was seeing in some of my reference photos but it was really hard for my mind to grasp that so like just do what feels comfortable to you and you're the artist here so it's not wrong okay so I'm going to kind of curve it this way and I also want you guys to notice that like I have gaps in my like between my leaves and stuff like so much of what we see our brain creates implied lines that aren't like actually there like we can't, we don't actually see it okay and remember like usually too like these fronds aren't evenly spaced like some of them are closer to other ones Some of them overlap a lot, and some of them are kind of like random out in the middle of nowhere. That's okay. I actually really love, so this my dark value here is kind of almost like a navy color um which is i i actually really love how that's playing against the pink and the purple and Mm. the peach you know but if you want straight black like you guys have every right to use just black paint like there are some there are some um, artists out there who refuse to use the color black Um, because it kind of is a flattening color there's not like a richness to it Um, but like I don't know that's interesting to me it's just whatever you guys like I I just don't love to make rules for other people you know like do whatever you want (laughs) if you like black paint use black paint I'd love to see how they decide the color when they're mixing paint what do you mean like in a batch mixing for to then bottle i'd love to see how they decide because i feel like black is the combination of all colors right oh so you're like what pigments are they using to mix this non-color yeah and then how do they get it to be a real black color yeah that's a great question i mean i've recently started playing with mixing my own paints and colors and stuff like that And it has been super fun because like you're just given like these pure pigments and then you can decide the ratios and the ratios of the pigments you choose will affect the actual color at the end. Yes. Super fun. Okay, so we did our first tree. And also I want you guys to know that like you have permission to change things after you paint it. For example, I'm gonna thicken up my tree trunk just a little bit. It just felt like it needed a little bit stronger base okay and now I'm gonna do this other big one down right here okay oh I got a drop on it there we go so I'm gonna do my tree trunk I'm gonna be about I don't know two inches in from the side this one's pretty thick so I'm gonna be using my six And then, uh, you know, just repeat. Now remember that because this is 
our um, closest tree to us. I'm gonna make sure that my trunk is thicker and my little fronds are gonna be a bit thicker. That doesn't mean you can't have thin lines. You just need to uh, make sure you address those thick ones. Because the thing about perspective, especially when you're painting depth and space, like I want you to, next time you're driving around and let's say you see a field and there's a fence in that field, the fence that's closest to you, if, if it starts close to you and it goes into a distance, if you look at the thickness of the fence post, they actually get thinner the farther away it gets from you because it gets smaller. So that's essentially that same principle. When something is close to you, when that form is close to you, it's going to be thicker. As it gets farther away, it shrinks. And that, that also means your lines, your, the thinness of the lines. That's also why if it is a fence and the fence part is close to you, like let's say it's wire, like a wired fence. If you're really, if you're right next to the fence, you're gonna clearly see that wire. If you look at a wired fence in the distance, it's really hard to actually see that individual wire. So you have to account for that when you're painting depth in a painting, you have to think about the lines and the thickness of those lines and the depth and space of those lines and that will affect how thick they are. Make sense? Totally. Okay. One time I was on a farm and I was doing a, I was bucking hay. Uh-huh. And I got so excited when we were done bucking hay that I turned around and ran out of this uh, barn area. Yeah. And I did not see the electrical <gasps> fence. No. It threw me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. So yeah, so when it's far away, you can't see it. But when you aren't paying attention, you may also <laughs> not be able to see it. <laughs> I love these colors of this project so much. This just like, oh, like this is the magic of like, I don't know, tropical. I remember when I lived in Hawaii for a bit, I never got up and seen so many sunrises before in my life. Like I purposely made time to it was so beautiful. see the sunrise because it was just so beautiful and vibrant, especially against that like ocean water. Yeah. Gorgeous. One of the things I got to visit Hawaii, I've been there twice. Okay. One personal trip, one military trip. Mm -hmm. And the first time I was there, I didn't realize that it would just rain out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. One, it could either be crazy rain or it could be sunshiny and rain just falls yep. Yep. out of nowhere. Yep. <laughs> and it's amazing. That's one thing I love. Yeah. A little crazy there. That's okay. I'm just gonna keep going. You could totally add coconuts to one of these. Oh yeah. Oh, that got pretty thick for my line, but um, can't stop me. You know, <laughs> I'm just gonna keep going. I think it's gonna work out just fine. And again, the beauty about all of this, the beauty about painting and creating is um, you can always do more, you can always do it again, and you can always learn. And so like sometimes it's fun to get into a space of learning and exploring when like painting one thing is not the end of the world. It's just like, let's just see what happens. And I'm gonna try this. And if it doesn't work out, that's fine. I got another sheet of paper. I got plenty of paint. I'm just gonna like do it again. Run it again. Run it again. I accidentally squished my Twix. Oh. But I think it's clinking? fine. It's still edible. That's the beauty of food. Yeah. Regardless of what it looks like, you can still eat it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to do one more kind of coming down this way. Do my chunks. Let there be white space. And then kind of when they all overlap, like in this center, you're gonna have what, some white space, but like they're gonna be overlapping a lot, so you might not have as much. Oh my gosh, 
so in love with this project. Okay, now I actually really love doing the tiny trees. You do? I do, I really do. I think they're super fun because they're just so tiny. You gotta do a little, um, But they're a little bit more difficult because you do have to be aware of the thickness of your lines. So just acknowledge that and go for it. So I'm gonna do this thin little guy coming up here. And I'm exclusively using my round two for this. If you have a smaller brush, like a zero? You can use a zero, there's ones, there's even smaller than zeros. So if you do a lot of thin detailed painting like this, I would suggest getting smaller than a round two. Now this one, because the, these are far away, because they're so thin and fine, I'm not doing my chunk thing. I'm actually just doing the individual little leaves. Voila, it's a palm tree far away. Isn't that insane? That's like, amazing. Gosh, it's amazing. It's amazing the tricks we can play on ourselves if we just know how to adjust value and proportion and lines, you know? And remember, like, the lines all don't have to connect. Okay. I'm gonna do... The other thing that I try to be aware of is like, are they all the same length or not? Like I try to adjust the heights on a lot of these to give it variation. This one is a little bit closer and thicker, so I'm gonna go a little bit darker. I made it shorter. And again, there's nothing wrong with making them all the same height. It's just gonna adjust, like it's gonna kind of flatten your depth of field a little bit. What you don't want to do is if you are doing them all the same height, they have to be all the same thicknesses too. That Does would that be tricky, sense? yes. So like, if you want it to be like, it's just a row of palm trees in front of you and it's not a depth of field of a bunch of different size palm trees, keep them all the same thicknesses. Because imagine how wonky it would look if like, this is like, one and then I do this thinness the same height right next to it like that's gonna really throw off a lot of things so if you are playing with heights and adjustments you need to play with thicknesses if you are all keeping them the same height they need to be the same thickness yes question yeah what if you started from left to right or right to left whichever uh -huh. and wherever you started is the thickest tree and then you do all the way to the other opposite side of the paper you decrease the thickness every single tree. Would that create a going away or would that be something else? If you're decreasing the thicknesses, you have to adjust the height as have well. To. You have to, otherwise it'll just be funky. Because think about, think about, I'm trying to like think of examples. Okay, so. <sighs> I mean, I went straight back to the fence and I, I recognize what you're saying too, being the same concept of like, they're getting smaller, but they're also seemingly getting shorter. Yes, exactly. Even though they're on the, if they're on the same plane as the yeah. every single post. Because when you're looking at depth of space, even if the ground stays, if it keeps going, it actually goes up. Does that make sense? Yes. So like, if I'm standing on the ground right here and that's the bottom, and the ground keeps on going, it, because it's three dimensional, the ground 50 feet in front of me isn't at the same length if I'm drawing it, it's gonna be a little bit higher. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So if you were to do like what you were saying, like start this size and it gets smaller. Oh, interesting. The ground also has to go up. Yeah. I'm picturing a football field and yes, if I'm standing on one end zone looking at the other one, it does. Not as aggressive, but it is a gradual climb up versus mm -hmm. a flat. Because it's actually, and because when something's actually flat and it keeps going, it goes like this. Yeah, it goes interesting. Up in space. And I know that that's so tricky, but that like, that's confusing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 
I hope I explained that right. You did. Okay. Well, you explained it to where I understand it. So. That'll clear it up for anybody. <laughs> okay, and I'm just gonna keep going with my trees. These actually kind of remind me of like snowflakes a little bit, don't they? Like this one? I don't know. Feels like a snowflake. Yeah, I could see that. But we're thinking tropical, not frozen. Yes. <sighs> tropical sounds nice. Mm -hmm. And while I love winter, it gets so cold. It gets very, very cold. Okay. And then I'm going to do like a hint of a, of a tree coming over here. Cool. Oh, that's another thing I was going to say. Depending on the palm tree I've seen, some of them have some gnarly curve to them. Yeah, yeah. They don't have to be just like, but I try, like you can see, I try to put just a slight. Yeah thing in, in all of them. Okay, and then I need one over here. Gosh, I love that pink purple that I got over here. I, I didn't too. get that on the I love like it. that is saturated, that is vibrant, and I'm loving it. It may just be me, but I feel like it's gotten darker since you've added the palm trees. Like it's almost been complemented mm. to where it's more noticeable and I love it. Yeah. Ooh, I got a little bit crazy there. That's okay. I'm just gonna keep going. Just keep painting, just keep painting. Just keep keep painting and going and playing and <sighs> that's it. I think, so I do in my actual one, I had one more tree here, but because this frond went out so much longer, I would kind of actually end up covering it anyway. So I don't think it's necessary. So I'm just gonna leave it. Nice. And you guys have every right to do that to your own painting where you're like, mm, I know you have that on that, but I don't know if I need it. And that's it. That's our tropical trees project. Lovely. So That fun. was amazing. Okay. I was really worried about it initially. I was like, ooh, is, <laughs> is this the one where Sarah lost it? <laughs> and now the reveal. The Slowly reveal. take off the tape. Look at that clean edge. Wow. Actually, let's do this side too. And you want to pull away from the paper. Still be soft and gentle. Pull that toward just a tiny bit. Love a clean edge. Only thing better than a clean edge is a good, good, good clean, uh, well cooked pan of brownies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the only thing better than a clean painting edge is a brownie edge. It, yes. Have you seen the brownie, yeah. the, the like edge for, pan? Yeah, the eternity yeah. edge pan or whatever it's called. Yes, I have. Oh. All right. We did it. Wow. That's our project. That's beautiful. I hope you guys have fun with this one. I had a lot of fun and play with it. Like, I don't know, go crazy. This is all about exploring and fun and trying things new and um, trusting yourself. And it gets really hard 
to learn how to trust yourself when it comes to making art. But that just comes with practice, with trying new things, with being kind to yourself and not comparing everything. If this is your first time painting, it probably is not gonna look exactly like mine, but it shouldn't because I've been painting for a long time. And that's how it's true with any skill. So give yourself the grace, give yourself the permission to not be amazing at something at the very beginning and know that and then just keep going and over time you'll get better. That's just how it works with a skill that you practice. You know what I mean? Um, Keenan, thank you for being here. You're welcome. Thank if, you. If you want to share what you're doing, you can post on our Facebook group that's called Let's Make Art Watercolor. We also are on Instagram. You could tag us at Let's Go Make Art or hashtag Let's Make Art. And if you need any of these supplies, you can find them at <laughs> Let's Make Art.com. Thank you guys so much. Bye.